And we are off. Welcome to the Deep in the Woods podcast, episode 11. We just finished up at Veterans Park, week 11, ace race. Lots happened, lots of, of excitement, lots of aces. I'm here with none other but Alan Hoxie, Benny McDaniel, and our special guest of the night, Aaron Nitz. What's up, guys? Um, yeah, super exciting. Um, we'll hop right into it. Um, Storylines of the night. Um, like I just said, we finished up at Veterans Park. Ace race, we had we grilled out, made it a big ordeal. Hawks, what happened on your card? Well, so just to confirm, so we're all on the same page. Yep. What is this ace race? Can you tell the people what the ace race is all about? Sure. So race it was basically the ace. It was basically a conglomerate mm. of our league came what, together to form this alliance cool. and decided that we wanted to hit as much aces as possible. Okay. So what happened was Aaron Went out there, put some shorter tee pads out there, up to every basket. Shorter like 700, 400. So the, the range, if I believe, if I remember correctly, was 60 to 150 feet. Okay. Yep. Now okay. we all each went around with mm-hmm. our groups. Mm-hmm. We took three laps. Mm-hmm. We got three shots at every basket. Um, and then at the end of the night, we counted our metal hits. So everything bucket and above. Mm. And then our aces. And then we were paid out. Um, after that, um, according 38 to 38 guys, right? Yep, 38 guys, 37, 38, so 38 like that. times three. <clears throat> well, so you said, but we this we got three throws per hole, it was a little over a hundred shots per guy, yeah, nine holes, and a, so almost four thousand shots. Well, because you added for the three night. extra holes, so we had 12 yep. holes, yep, yeah, times three, 36 times it's three is 108, yeah. yeah, like I said, it's crazy, He's smart. I got two medals. Hurts. Day. So great. lots of fun. Yeah, really go good. ahead and highlight. Yeah, tell, 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 tell us about those two medal shots. Yeah, so, well, do you, do you mind bringing up your stats real quick? Yeah. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> you got those <laughs> saved on your phone? <laughs> yeah. yeah, so <laughs> okay. halfway through, also known as right at the beginning. He's looking at a locked screen right now. <laughs> yeah, we were uh, asked to record aces and medal hits, rightfully so. And so I brought it up to my group. I was like, hey, guys, somebody have a – like a notes app, and they're like, "Why?" And so to keep score, well, can't you just keep it in your head? I was like, "Yeah." I mean, it's not like we were hitting. I could. There were many, many holes where we no one did anything, so it was kind of. Hoxie has one of those cricket phones that only has like six so, buttons on it, so he could very find new, apps, but yet not. Kind of what he said. It doesn't have. It's like a flip phone, but but it still has a screen. Yeah. It doesn't do much, but it's yeah. there. Texts with T nine, you know, so, he's good. <laughs> so. I wasn't. I got snake. Remember old school snake? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> dark. anyway, I don't have any stats. Okay. I could tell you what I did, and I hit two uh, two buckets. Well, no, who, who no shined problem. in your card? Who shined in your card? <sighs> Sean. What'd the man do? I think he hit three aces and like five medals or yep, something. Three silly. aces, five medals. He. Uh, and it's a mindset change. If you ever done an ace race, just hit the ace because you're not going to putt. That's difficult for me because I'm such a good player outside of. Just kidding. So I'm pretty sure everybody on the card did better than you. Well, uh, Nick and I tied for last. Oh, okay, sorry. Yeah, good work, Nick. So anyway, um, you just run it, run everything. Okay. Who cares? And I didn't run. I tried, kind of, but it just it's. And you had Benny on your card, correct? But when you have but, three different discs, it's kind of difficult to do that. Hey, man. One for the wind. One, hey, so I got a question for, for you guys. On the ace run, or on the ace race, uh, did you find, Hoxie, you just referenced, like, laying up or, like, playing good golf. You said, if yeah. I was playing golf today, I'd play great golf. Right. Fantastic. Couldn't did you guys, what, what would you say is the percentage of shots, just off the top of your head, watching your entire group for the whole day, how many shots went in under the cage versus, like, the correct height or even too high? Because on our card, I felt like we missed under the basket. We were short a lot. Like 75% of the time. But it's a great golf Ma- shot. Maybe the disc ended up sliding under the yeah. basket or something like that, which yeah. is a great layup shot. But like, mm-hmm. you're right. We didn't change our mindset today. For reference, we hit the pole, a I bunch. bet you, 12, 13 times today. Yeah. Nate, we didn't have that happen, did we? No, we were putting them in. Actually. We're better, actually. Yeah, we oh, kept okay. hitting the pole and then making it land in the basket. Yeah. You, you both did better than us. I, I, I didn't, I didn't feel like I did terrible, but... 
for your stats? So, uh, Aaron, Aaron, why don't you aces, touch on, no, on what happened wow. on our card? That's a lot our of card, uh, we had a huge mix of players, anywhere from new players mm-hmm. to, you know, me who's been playing for whatever, and Nate's been playing for quite a few years. We had uh, three or four different players with at least five medals or aces. Um, lots of players hit ace. Um, checking officially, Nate had a couple. Uh, Andrew hit an ace. John Vestal, who only stayed for half the night, he hit an ace. Chris hit an ace. I had one. Uh, Aaron Bolin hit two. Um, so we had a bunch of people bouncing aces. It was a, it was really fun to cheer on the other guys. Like, and they were all kind of spread out too. Like yep. two or three holes later, somebody splashed one. It felt like around the the. Uh, uh, I haven't trouble to describe the course, but towards the road, it was kind of a tougher section. And so it felt like we went through a drought and Mm -hmm. then we came into that, you know, the the berm area. Mm -hmm. And then that's when we kind of picked up steam. We got our momentum and then we kind of burnt out towards the back there again. That little guy, um, one of the added holes. Yeah. um, The first added hole after the basket. The one off the the electrical. Mm -hmm. That was deceivingly hard. Like, mm-hmm. I felt like, I mean, that had to have been. You and can't see it. I know. And then all of a sudden it's like, I don't know where my disc's going or it's where it's so, supposed to go. There's there so many though. times you're like, go up there and look. You know? it's, it's possible I threw a roller out of rage and it almost went in. And it was the closest shot he threw. <laughs> it's, it's funny because Hawk, did you ever notice how many times Hoxie throws accidental rollers on the course? Hey, so he's even throwing rollers in an ace race. <laughs> <Sweet. laughs> That's when you know you made 50 it. It's a 50-foot hole. That's you know when you've arrived. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I had only had one ace and, and three metal hits. And I was like... Very, very frustrated. Cool. So I want to touch it because we only have of the four of us. We've only ha- we only covered two cards. So I do want to touch on what happened on other cards. One highlight from because Zach Wait, posted- did they did they submit their scores so we can actually know for real what happened? It is tough because some That's cards cheap. didn't right. <laughs> so they did actually do it, which okay. is awesome. It's good good for them. So I'm they looking at lied. I'm looking at. Zach Pesta's scorecard. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the big highlights, I'm looking at Derek, which to me, Derek's game, Derek Fancel's game, screams just, 150 mm-hmm. in aces. Mm-hmm. He just he may, he plays ace races yeah. in casual rounds. On a weekly rounds. basis. <laughs> yeah, so he actually had three aces, but he also had two back-to-back. So We did he, hear that. Yeah. On the same hole? Mm-hmm. On the same hole. Oh, was that the one in the middle yeah. of the field? No, nope. that was that was the one we heard it. Hole three, it was hole three at the very end. Hole three, yeah, right. It's it's hidden behind from the oh, sidewalk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. because there were the only like thirty seconds, in between, like ten seconds in between the cheers. Cash, cash, yeah. really. Oh, so cheater. that, that Love looks it. to be the highlight on that card. Um, fun card looks like looks to be. <clears throat> I don't think we have stats from the other cards. So oh, see, that is frustrating. <laughs> Noobs. But uh, let's move on from there. Mm. One fun thing we did, yeah. and I thought was a huge success, was we gave out some awards. Yeah. So I want to touch awards. on that real quick. You mean outside of the normal, hey, you win? None of us would know. Well. How about it? One of us does. Oh, get yeah. out of here. <laughs> Actually, two of them do. Wait, what? Did so you, you got an award too? So, I mean, I felt like I needed one, right? So Dude, um, you, Aren't you the one to give him out? He's been watching Hoxie each week, and he said, you know what? I'm giving myself an award, dang it. Hoxie's, it's the you algorithm. Think, Did so, you have an algorithm too for the awards? No, I, I mean, I, I, I let the algorithm handle it, but I certainly just facilitated it. Oh, true. okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I thought of a, I walked around Meyer and I, I found these... Tangerines, which was the cheapest you, and you funnest way to, to do come it. Up with an algorithm. I guess so. And that so, way I can make whatever I want to happen happen too. So our most viable player um, obviously had to go to Sean. Okay. Sean took down the points. Sure. Made sense. You know, he he solidified it tonight too. Yeah, I mean, I'm, dude <laughs> won the league and then came to the ace race and schooled us all. <laughs> yeah. So probably with a zone OS, all three shots. Probably. So get freaky zones <laughs> every time. Yeah. Mm. All, all no putters? Three. No putters. That's hilarious. So before you Sick. go on, of the what ten aces that we had in our card, one was back in. That's it. You guys had ten aces, something like that. Yeah. Justin had three, or Justin Monero had three flicks. Sean had three flicks. Are you talking about medals or aces? I'm talking about aces. So Justin had two. That's confusing. Sean had three. I had one. Aces? Yeah. yeah. You had three aces? No, I had, one. had one. Oh, Sean had three. Justin had two. You had one. Stephen had one. No, Stephen had two. Nate, that sounds two. like it's too many, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Because there were only 26 on the whole <laughs> night. I think there might have been two entire eight. cards that were dry. Oh. So maybe maybe eight. Because yeah, we, we had, we had like eight anyway. as well. Yeah. Sorry. Carry on. My bad. Uh, most viable C player. Um, there was a, you know, I felt mm-hmm. we could have gone to a couple guys, but went to Garrett. 
Um, most valuable B had to go to Sean. I felt like he deserved <laughs> both awards. I guess. Most valuable. I thought the awards would have been, you know, it would have lost, you know, credibility if 100%. I didn't give it to Sean. Most valuable A went to Aaron. Um, I felt like that was earned. Perfect t- attendance. We had oh. four guys. Who was that? Me. Oh, dang. Aaron. Oh, okay. Michael Thomas. Mm-hmm. And then Zach Pasta. Mm-hmm. And so, good group there. Mm-hmm. Got I mean, some people just care award? more than other yeah. people. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, so. it, was, it was a good award. It, was, it wasn't like MVP or something. So. Yeah. Defensive player of the year. You know. Rookie of the year, there was a lot of guys in the running. And so, I kind of... We had of, a lot of rookies. I leaned heavily towards the points on this one. And was for the right Christian <laughs> Dolacek. It was the right call. That's fair. Yep. Most improved player. It's hard to meet for me to be in touch with what guys are doing, and so this is purely bias on my my end. Okay, but I gave this to Zach Ellis. But this is the algorithm. This was, sure we'll go ag- algorithm on that one. Um, clutch He's, gene. I thought this was a fun one. Was a good one. Clutch gene. Um, it was how many bonus points per uh, outings you came out mm-hmm. to. Mm-hmm. Zeke Nitz um, unfortunately wasn't there to take his prize home, but his mom. Took it full form. That was nice over. Which is cool. Thanks, cool. Mom. Cool Best care. dressed. <laughs> Best dressed with Eli. It yeah. was either Eli or Michael Thomas. Eli's always dressed to the nine. He's, dude, he got some sweet shirts. Yeah. He's sparkly. It's always looking good. Cute guy. And then <laughs> a little fun one at the end. Uh, most decimal output. Oh, yeah. Um, went to Wait, my dad. Most what? Decimal output. Decibel? Decibel. Decimal. With a B. With a B. Okay. Decimals I wondered what he was doing with decimals. Like uh, 2.6.3.2. I don't this. think we should focus on that <laughs> as much. <laughs> but, <laughs> as, as, but if you think about it, who did it go to? Yeah. My dad loves decimals. <laughs> it goes to him, and everybody knows. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. This, this is what he meant. It made that guy, sense. That guy's loud. So yeah. I'm confused on why I'm just now hearing that Sorry, I messed man. up <laughs> now <laughs> on the podcast. So, uh, we, we all talked, and we were going to save it for this moment. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So that's, that was exciting. <laughs> uh, that's Those awesome. are fun awards. Glad we did that. Nice yep. job, guys. Way to earn your tangerine. <laughs> Any other things you want to touch on for the ace race? This is fun. It was surprisingly out. tiring. Yeah, th- I think the th- like the three <laughs> rounds was. And like, it was funny because we debated that back yeah. and forth, and, and like, yes, somewhere absolutely. around the middle of the third round, I was like, "This is you know." I'm still having fun, but I could have sure. been done. I looked at Hawks and said, "I'm going to say something I've never said about disc golf." I'm kind of getting tired of this. Yeah. I well, think, it was the same shot over and over again. I wanted even to though drive. they were different. Yes, on the third round, I'm like, I'm gonna drive to this basket that I'm not playing on right now, but there's people on it. Like, so I think, and it worked well because we changed from Auburn Hills. Auburn Hills is like 75 max, right? And it's In far. terms of distance, it, obviously drive. It's far. I mean, so I'm sorry. Like, so 75 feet per hole maximum, right? No, actually, what's weird is it's almost the exact same thing I put together today. Yeah. Yep. There's a 55 footer, mm. then there's a 120 footer, and eight of the nine holes are in that gap. Okay. Then there's randomly one 200 footer that we shorten. Sure. But it, it <clears throat> it's a lot of straight shots at it at Auburn Hills. And today okay. we made use of bushes and trees of like you had to go picnic tables. Had to go, yeah, picnic mm. tables. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. had to go Annie, you had to go Heiser, you had to go high putt. So maybe it was because there was 12. Maybe it was 12 and three times around, hmm. three throws each. At yeah, maybe 12 we baskets. shave a little bit off next time. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we. Duly uh, noted. Maybe yeah, it's yeah. three rounds of nine. Yeah. Or seven it's, rounds of six. We could just keep doing this all day. <laughs> Holy smokes. I think that was that's, one that's of the worse. parts. Nate's going to put some decimals in there. <laughs> where I was like, hmm. But at the same time, I would have loved if people would have kept track of which holes that they aced on. Because I guarantee you... You mean like put it in the notes app and then submit it to the 100%. director? <laughs> yeah. Had, had we known that we should do that, then I think it would have been great. But if you think about a whole one, two, three, four... Aren't you the one that like admins the <clears throat> U-Disc thing? No, not anymore. Oh, okay. I passed that off. Never no, Moxie, I 100% agree with you. I regret that we didn't have a way of like... Yeah. Like we always say, what, what hole played the easiest, what hole played that the hardest? It would have been really good to have stats on, right. for sure. I, I'm just curious, because hole four Our stat was, guy's not here. was super difficult yeah. so we with have, all the trees and we stuff. Have no, we have no way to prove this, but let's, let's still guess. What hole do you believe got aced the least tonight, and is there a hole that do you think did not get aced? Oh, I think, I hole, guarantee hole it's, the, it's hole four. 
The the one the Annie shot or if everybody's mm-hmm. throwing well, over knows? the church. That's is it Annie shot or is it you go the right? Spike eyes. That was the one Derek used yeah. twice, and we also saw Aaron. The no, one you're, four. That's the one. You're before. talking about three. Oh. Four is the one that the, the regular hole is three hundred and fifty. I hit the top long. of the basket on that one. Yep, skipped it off top. I didn't Ooh, see an ace there. Did you guys? I saw one medal, and that's. What do you guys see on the picnic table? Oh, which hole? one? I'm curious. Oh, I know. I oh, know. picnic table. That was hard too. The one after that was hard too, but we saw a lot of medals on that one. I know, Aaron, did you ace that one? Picnic table or the next one? The next, the next one. one. No, but I threw that really fun sidearm glitch shot. Yeah. That's a fun disc to throw. Yeah, I Make sure that one. You probably should have tried the uh, Super Dillo. <laughs> the, the big one Sean had? <laughs> so fun. That thing's crazy. <laughs> we tried that a few times. And even the yeah, little... Yeah, the picnic the little, table was hard. The little downhill guy. It was fun. I, I still enjoyed it, though, because it made you do something. Oh, yeah. How many times 100%. have you been in the bushes? Absolutely. And you're in there and you're like... Trying to put like this, or right. I saw people scuba yep. do different things. That was Steve uh, Shimataro threw like three different shots every time on that hole. Yes. Did like you guys, one tomahawk, one putt, one yeah. there. Did you guys see the obvious line through the picnic tables? Yeah, I did. it was too easy. So I don't want to get too right. easy. We, so we just, yeah. <laughs> cool. You know. Or any at all, for that matter. Yeah, yeah. No, I wasn't into that. <laughs> I felt like the food, the the pre, uh, pre-ace race stuff went yep. really well. Yep. Go um, work, Shannon. Yep. Yep. Thanks she, to the Nate. couple of wives and moms and people yeah. that mm-hmm. helped us get that all organized. That was good stuff. Thanks, Thanks mom again and Nate for getting there early. Yep, appreciate. It. I got. I was a little worried that we weren't going to be able to reserve that, uh, or at least someone would come there and kind of take over. I the thought there might have been a turf war. Did you see those guys walk in and kind of give us that? We had the I numbers. Who, my are, chest. who are these guys? We had the numbers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We had the, I should. I was thinking about telling them we were about to be, you know, gone, but yeah, you know, they stuck right. it out. So we almost had to fight with the guys with the. Speed cars too, the big oh, muscle yeah. cars. That was a they, spectacle. Yeah, guys almost ran over these two little kids on bikes. Hey, that was this close I to being be a the, serious accident. Yeah. I might be the first uh, person to lose a disc in an ace race. Wait, what? what? Were you the one the last one under a car? Oh, no. oh, I did not lose it, but it was my disc. Uh, was it? Was it a uh, a a American flag um, vulture of some sort? Maybe. American flag vulture. A no, red, red disc with an American flag on it? Yeah, was it, did it have American flag on it? Was that, that, was that a clearish disc? No. What did you lose? I use, uh, I lost a blue nuke. Uh-oh. Okay, never mind. So Bradley, um, if you've ever played at Veterans, you've probably seen him out there. He came oh, over. Yeah. He's the one that lost one. He came over and showed me it, and he said, uh, anyone lose this disc? And then he... he was it was a U.S. amateur stamp on it? It just had an American flag on it, and yeah. then I was like, oh, I'll leave it here. I'll ask if someone lost it. Um, then he's like, oh, no, it's it's mine. And there was a weird story that happened after that. I was like, okay. Bradley, if you're watching this, when your mom calls you and tells you to come home, <laughs> come, come home. Yeah, we did witness a phone <laughs> call. Argu- argument between him and his mom on speakerphone. Yeah. Uh, just three more holes, mom. I do holes. appreciate the disc golf hustle, though. Yeah, That kid yeah. was, like, was sold work. out, man. Cool. So I do, I do want to point out one thing. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Steve managed to hit a car. Steve. What Shinto. hole? That's not so. Uh, the basket up hole. Oh, yeah. Up basket. The, he flicked. The, yeah, up the. Turned the one basket. over. Time out. Oh, yeah, Hitting sorry, the car yeah. is not the worst part. Okay. What's the worst part? <laughs> was it driving? <laughs> Somebody was in it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, so, and so Steve just looks up and she looks at him and he's just like. <laughs> no, no. So Steve, so I was. Here, here's the story. So it's the tall basket. Yeah. He missed it on the on the flick. The car was parked there <laughs> to smack the front bumper. <laughs> and I'm kind of parallel. It's, it's someone. It's hard to see. They're talking on the phone. And you see Steve on the side on the box. You know, give him the hey, my bad. You know, my bad. I love you. Sorry. You know. And we just moved on. And then, and then he, he had to walk did, over. They didn't get out of the no, car though, did they? Then the no. next. That was his first of three. So yeah. disc two and disc three were way no, he was, left. He was, like you could tell he was he didn't hit no that car again. He so was I, no I looked recovery. at him. I was like, "I'll go get it for you, so yeah. you don't have to face her." That's funny. <laughs> it's pretty, anyway, sorry. Cool. Good good night overall. Yeah. I think it was fun. A little something different than our normal league. Mm-hmm. Um, even little things like you got to play with who you wanted. So many yeah. many of us were able to, you know, hook up with old buddies that we maybe mm-hmm. haven't played around with in a long time. Um, groups. Uh, some people at first out when I said. Groups of six to eight. Some people are like, oh, it's so big. Like, but it's very fun to cheer on each other yeah. when people make good and shots. It, and it flows. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We had no an awesome card. It was a blast. Yep. We had fun too. Cool. So, Aaron, we just finished up 2023 spring season. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot happened. 
Um, I thought it went, um, I thought a lot of excitement happened. It yeah. went really well. What were some of the things that you thought um, went well and some of the things that, you know, how did you think it went? Um, I was very happy. Uh, we talked, you know, when I was on with you guys at the very beginning of the season, I remember a couple of things. Number one, about how hyped we were at the numbers and that we sustained those numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, that first week, I remember Benny, you know, talking with Benny, like, oh, there's 36, you know, room for 36 on this course, and we have 36. By the end of the season, our average is 38. Mm-hmm. So we kind of stayed, you know, That's solid cool. right there. Um, also, I thought we were adding a lot of quality guys, like, a lot of down to earth guys yeah, who are people. Yep. building on each other. So most yeah. of them, there's a couple of people I don't think are very quality. We don't need to name names. Sean Clint. <laughs> but, <laughs> but even like uh, you know, we've talked about do we want to become a disc golf scene advertised league, and we've yeah. we've debated the the merits and the you know non merits of doing mm-hmm. that. And this idea of inviting people that we know, mm-hmm. I think, is what makes our league one of the cool things about it. Um, I think there's a very distinct culture in our league. Um, some of those things are external, like we don't have a lot of guys, you know, getting drunk while they're playing. Sure, sure. But some of those things are on the internal, of like we all are trying to get better. Right. We're not just out there because, well, I want to get away from my family or my job's been right. stressful. But there's a lot of guys in our league that are like, I want to become a really good disc golfer. Right. And we're helping each other get there. People are teaching each other and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's one of the strengths of our league that makes it be one that people want to come back to. Yeah. Um, so that's been really cool. I remember the week that Tony Luce was on. Uh, Benny, you and him made some joke about the bees taking over or something like that. And Tony Lewis was like, oh, the bees are coming. But the bee players in our league, like, they they dominated. They're putting some pressure on you. Oh, absolutely. When you looked at the, like, top 10 players, I think I I might have been the only A player in the top 10. Somebody would have to verify that, but it's either one or two of us in the top top 10. Who's top 10 we're talking about? No, 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 the actual points. Okay, sorry. The, the realistic one that uh, it was like one shots fired one A player like two or three C's and like six or seven B players in that ranking and so I feel like there was a lot of players that were average players and pushed themselves to, to that elite level if you're talking about a tournament these are AM4 guys who are now AM3 mm-hmm. these are AM3 guys that are now AM2 a couple AM2 guys pushing that AM1 ceiling. So I thought that was one of my favorite parts to watch this season. So a lot of times guys come in with, in with expectations or just skill levels <clears throat> that are are lower than what they come out of. So they kind of take that stride mm-hmm. within the season to capitalize on those later weeks yeah. when they are performing at a higher level. Absolutely. There's something to be said about stepping into a competitive match, competitive game, competitive round, whatever sport you want to play. Consistently. Mm-hmm. Now, you play every Tuesday. Yes, it's a friendly environment, but it's a competitive environment. Yep. You're going to get better with a consistency and competing against others. Right. You know, we're not winning billions of dollars. We're not here to... Billions. I mean... Like <laughs> you know, it's funny. There you're talking about that and even like the joke about billions of dollars, but that's another thing that sets our league apart too. Uh, 90% of the leagues out there... Um, like the joke among disc golfers is you're playing for your Burger King money. You know, mm-hmm. your are your $12, your $20, that kind of thing. And there's a lot of guys out there that are like, they get mad when somebody else takes their $20 right. or their $10. And in our league, since you're not really playing for those dollars, I mean, you might hit an ace or hit the birdie fund, but we're all out there. We're all trying to get better. Just, and yeah, I think we just want to be good at disc golf yeah, in it, general. It creates a culture of like, I don't lose when you win. Like right. we both we both can win. Right. And I know that sounds cheesy, but like I think that's a real thing for our league. Yeah, so that's what's a part. That I mean, I, nobody I was mad at, mad when uh who was it, Christian hit the ace? Right. No one's Oh, right. in most disc golf league. leagues, people have just been swearing up and down like stole my money out of this I wanted to get like right. people were just hyped for him. That was yeah. cool. I also I mean, it kind of transitions into your car too. So like t- traditionally you'd be kind of rooting against your card mates right. where now you're just you're getting momentum is building with the, the hype. Unless it's Sean yeah. Clancy. Oh, yeah, well, that's right. <laughs> it's actually, usually the people that we like the most are the You're people 100%. that we mess with the like, most. Today, when I when I got there, like I said something to him. He's like, why are you always me- me- messing with me? I'm like, dude, because you started after me and you're 10 times better than me already. <laughs> yeah. But cool. He's taking some heat off me. I like it. As you yeah. get better and as you start becoming the better one in the group, you, you got to take heat. Like Aaron's of course. taking heat for that's years. That's why I don't get so. any heat. <laughs> it's true. Well, we didn't want to say it out loud, but we love cool. you, Benny. Yeah, we love you, Benny. Yeah, 
You're a great disc golfer. I yeah. appreciate you it. You throw a lot of good CTPs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. Like, for what it's worth, like, I feel like my lines are amazing today. I just, yeah. I, yeah. like, they were all, like, this far away from the basket the whole day. It was annoying. It was, it was a lot of... <gasps> <gasps> he scared me there for a minute. I was like, what? Where did Maybe you okay? <laughs> yeah, it was. Exactly. I need hyperventilating. It was. So, yeah, to wrap up season one, it was very cool. Um, cool to put a new name on the trophy. Yep. Um, and again, I think like there's literally 10 guys up and down that could win the next season. I mean, I maybe so. more than 10. Yeah. And it could be you, right? Cool. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you talking to? Nate? He's talking to the camera. <laughs> yeah. Whoever comments first, you're yeah. going to be the one. We've, <laughs> could be we've been you. working on trying I to thought, engage the viewer. I love, yeah. the, I love the silence, and we all just went. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We're all confused. Yeah. I just assumed you were talking to me. Can you do it one me. more time? We'll all look up. All right, go ahead. It could be you. All right, thanks for, cool. thanks for doing that. So going into the 2023 <laughs> yep. summer season, what do we have to look forward to? What are the, the kind of things we're, we're looking for? Well, first to? of all, if you don't know, uh, we did decide two years ago to split the league into two seasons. Mm -hmm. um, and that was to distribute kind of like who can win, you know, that there could mm -hmm. be two champs every year instead of playing for, you know, 20, 25 straight weeks. Um, and so it's been kind of fun. The first year we started late in the summer, so we didn't do it, but we've had two champs every season. So summer season, I think some cool things to look forward to. Number one is uh, longer days. And allowing us to play some longer courses and ones that are just a little bit more of a drive away. Mm -hmm. um, so you heard me mention that we're going to be headed out to um, Hawthorne mm -hmm. up in Pontiac is on the schedule. Um, the new redesigned Oakland University, mm -hmm. what do they call it? Grizzly Oaks. Grizzly Oaks. Um, Hoxie, the site of your first ever ace. That's true. 15 years ago. Well, I watched, something like that. Long I watched time, my right? boy throw a sweet blind ace. Um, and it kind of just like got overgrown and I yeah, think there were baskets pulled. They yeah, put they a new, new soccer dome, yeah. um, but it's back and I actually haven't played it yet, but based heard, on word of mouth, it deserves a spot in our lineup. Um, talked with Wade uh, late in the season. He says uh, Lawrence Tech is going to be ready. So he said, uh, we, we picked a week, he and I did, that he is available and making sure to kind of help host that week. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, fun to have a course designer cool. in our league. For sure. So some new courses I think will bring some new life to the course. I think that's going to be cool. Um, as we do advertise on UDISC, I know we mentioned More people not come. on the disc golf scene. We've had a few of our league members just kind of see an event coming and yeah. randomly showed up. So that's been pretty cool. Um, all of the points and all that stuff. Complete refresh. So in power rankings. Yep. Congrats to Sean. Um, Oxy, is there going to be a preseason power rankings? So have the, you talked to the algorithm about this? We 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 yes. Hey, yeah. But by the way, how was camp? <laughs> how was your algorithm camp? So I learned a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot, and I was the able algorithm to, learned a lot. Well, that's so why, that's I, why I missed. I learned a lot, but I was able to program the machine better. Oh. Boop, I boop, was boop, able to boop, program. Boop. Hold on, did you hear that? I was able to program the machine better. Yeah. So who's in charge, the algorithm or Hoxie? Well, no, I am. Oh, okay. But so I still put the info so in. So it's not. You, you've it, never admitted to that before. No, so I'm you've always, always blamed the algorithm. No, 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 He's no, no, always no, called it the no. algorithm. He never said my. Like algorithm. it's some artificial intelligence that he yeah, can't you, control. You are, Got his we, algorithm from ChatGPT. You guys are reading into it way too much. I built the machine from scratch. Oh, okay. Okay. The Old tin cans and pieces, aluminum foil. Hold on, the pieces of paper you write your thoughts down. <laughs> exactly. Where right. you put your name as uh, high as you can. Uh, I put, <laughs> whoa, dude, I ended up like 12th. Uh, I dropped a bunch. I don't think I got, this is the time and place I'm, to be talking about the power rankings. Let's move on, right? Wow. Okay, sorry. Um, so, so to answer the question, there will not be preseason power rankings. Yep. We're just going to carry over from last year, but it's a clean reset. Okay. So just like last year. That was an oxymoron. So will it be after week one will be the first ones? Yeah. For the first week, I mean, we, we, we might have power rankings, but it's going to be who scored the best. So just looking back That's on fair. the previous power rankings, there was a lot of fluctuation that happened in the beginning of the season just oh, yeah. because of the volatility mm -hmm. and how much information we did have. Yeah, the yeah. data set was small. Just yep. a conglomerate of you everything. You can expect you know? the same because we only have 10-week seasons. And so be aware of that it's going into the first uh, Are you first probably going to be number one, Hoxie? Oh, well, yeah. I'm going to finish first. <laughs> No, I meant in the first one. Yeah, well, I'm going to win the first week. He's saying they don't come Fair. out after the first week. Okay. 
Cool. Sounds good. I'll put who my awesome. partner is first, and we'll be second. So, Aaron, I was wondering if we can go over the schedule a little bit and what yep. to look forward to with that. So, a couple of those new courses that I was just mentioning, um, most of them are pushed towards the end. Um, honestly, I think we want to play Oakland just as a collective group a little bit. Yeah. Maybe looking at layouts, if there are some shorts and longs, we didn't even know that yet. So we can get a good handle on that. Sure. Um, same thing with Lawrence Tech. I know that there's a couple holes that Wade is still kind of working with the university as far as like what's safe for pedestrians and stuff like that. Um, so that one we pushed a little ways in there. Um, near and soon on the schedule, in fact, uh, week one, uh, we have the Spindler Beast layout. So those of you who have not been in our league before, um, maybe you're familiar with the Bryce Behemoth layout. It's some combinations of some holes that create some par fours and par fives. Um, and Spindler is already a relatively tough course. Mm -hmm. But what we've done is we've changed 12 holes into nine holes. Um, some combos. Like, for example, there's a really long par five that goes all the way from like hole three to hole five. And there's some mm. things like that. Um, and we're looking at either triples or quadruples. And I will tell you that that is still open for discussion. So sometimes we invite you to, um, you know, respond to the podcast. Would you like to see four player scramble groups? Or would you like to see three player scramble groups? Mm. So that's just kind of something that's how, up there. How does Because we haven't discussed the new format. How does that work into the new format? That that is going to so, vary based on that. So okay. yeah, is if we just focus on that? the schedule okay. right now. Um, <clears> what's so after that's, Spindler? After Spindler, um, we're going to hit some familiars. We're going to hit Palmer, Firefighters, Stony Blues and Greens. Um, we're going to try to play the front nine layout at Riverbends, River and I think that is also going to be a triples night That's or a quadruples night. So you guys know that that layout, it's kind of weird. I haven't memorized. It's 1 through 10. Uh, you skip 11, 12. 11 is the easy one. 12 is that stupid over old with a thousand mm -hmm. trees. No, you play 13. Right, you, you play, play over the water. Yeah, yeah, 13, 14, 15. That's the river curve hole. Mm -hmm. 16 is the 400-footer. Mm -hmm. You skip to 19. It has a short and a long mm -hmm. Through the and tunnel. Then, and then you turn up the hill, up the hill, down the hill, finish. Yeah. Yeah. But either way, that front nine is very difficult. Um, that's going to lead to some three- and four-player groups. Um, just in case you're wondering, on the point system, um, the ratios will translate. It's always so, a half. A, so you guys are aware it's a yeah. half a point per person beat. Yep. So like in a normal week, if you beat a team of two, you get Score one point. point. Mm -hmm. If it's a team of three, you'll get one and a half points per team you beat. If you beat a team of four, it's two full points. So... Um, it creates a little less uh, discrepancy from high to low, but the points add up real quick if you start beating them. Yeah. Um, one of the cool things about those three- and four-player groups we found last year is kind of tonight how you cheered everybody on. Mm -hmm. um, and again, we even mentioned in our league we do that in general, but I don't know. It's just kind of a different vibe when everybody yeah, right. on my card is on my team and yeah. we're all, right. yeah, great shot, you know, because I lack, benefit. There's a lack of cheating. That's true. I hope – I hope – wait – are you I, saying you see some cheating? Oh, no, I'm, I'm making sure in groups of four. Oh, right, 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 right. Cheaters. So, yeah, so those those are coming up on the schedule. Yeah. Uh, I think that's going to make for some cool things. We've honestly outgrown the nine-hole courses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we don't we don't really want to play six-ums and, uh, you know, just that gunking up the course so tight. Mm -hmm. So Spindler has 12 holes. Uh, yes, we're going to play we'll the beast layout, but it's going to be we're going to be tight on that one. Yeah. Um, but after that, we're not, we're off those. Um, hopefully, we continue to grow even a little more, and we'll be locked into those eighteen plus whole courses. Cool. And I know we didn't mention it, but um, we are going to move into or transition into an A, B, C, D um, layout. Well, groups. And so I would like for you to kind of not only. You know, talk about the definitions, new new definitions of each group, mm -hmm. but also talk about the benefits yep. of transitioning into yep. A, B, C, D. Every time we've made a format change in the league, um, and I'll be honest, sometimes it's a me thing, sometimes it's a we thing. My goal from the start was always on any given night, any player that shows up could win league that night. Um, in the beginning, especially season one and two, uh, we had the same guys finishing at the top every week. And so we started to make you know, tweaks and little changes right. and stuff like that. Um, I believe that this change is going to work us more towards that. I think the ABCD uh, thing is going to change that. Uh, this season, one of the biggest ones, we, I think we started at the end of the year last year, we started having some A players throw a long, right. where some B players threw a short. Um, when we went out to Palmer, um, 
uh, it was almost a disaster because there were people that were shooting like 14, 15 under, um, and it was almost impossible for an A or a C to win. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're playing with things, right? We're trying to like, we're willing to take a risk and try something different. I think this ABCD thing is going to, um, like the short answer is it's going to prevent that B player super team. Like we kind of joked that we felt like John Vestal and Sean and Zach Pesta, some of our three best B players somehow seem to get paired up all the time. And if they're playing shorts, when A's are playing longs, that's, they're unstoppable. Those are great players. Mm-hmm. So we, we said, if we go with this A, B, C, D, where maybe the uh, most experienced, highest level A players, four or five of them, are with those players that maybe their distance isn't there. Or maybe they're very new to disc golf. So sure. put them in that D category, A and D partner. Then we've got a B player and a C player. They're not that far apart, but there's a distinction in our league between yeah. you know the highest end Bs and the lowest end Bs. So I feel like it's going to be more even. So I, I and you guys actually pushed for this early in the season, and I was a little reluctant because we we want to be slow to change things. If right. you just change things for change's sake, that can cause problems. But right. yeah, I think it's a great suggestion, and I'm excited to see how it turns out. Cool. Um, and then I know we already touched on it, but um, okay. Well, well, never mind. We'll talk about it later. Um, so we'll move into the lighthearted question. Um, what is your disc golf pet peeve? I know we started asking this question post you on the interview, so I yeah. want to ask you. Pet peeves. Uh, I think, and this one it like almost gets personal, I hate it when people play slow. Mm, I am I'm a fast player, and... Like when people like I heard people today say like even when they were writing down what they did after in their eights some they would stand in front of the basket for like three minutes mm. uh, and I don't know how it always happens to me I'm done like a half hour before everybody else and you just kind of sitting around there sitting around there sitting around there it happens to me at tournaments we at were league. throwing casual shots for days because <laughs> yeah. we just were sitting there yep. waiting I think part of it comes back to I played a lot of disc golf when my kids were little and I was in the like I want to play as fast as I can get home to my family as fast yeah. as I can. Loved playing disc golf, but also wanted to get home to my family. Sure. So I just kind of got into that mode of like step up and throw. And so, yeah, I think that's probably it. Slow players. I'm that way with, I think, a lot of things though, like board games. Like I'm like, I, like I, slow? I, when it, no, when, like I want to, when it's my turn, I want to go. Like mentally? No, like I'm just, I don't know. I hate when people just take time. Let's keep trying that, Hawks. Whatever, get out of here. So I will say, if you ever play a casual round with Aaron... After after the fourth guy has thrown and is slowly turning around after watching his shot and going to go back and get his bag and put his bag on, Aaron's halfway up the fairway. on the fairway, dragging his cart ready to go. You, you got to hustle. It's like you got to sprint. And, Catch and up with me. What happens is he gets into tournament rounds. He can't go as fast, and mentally he slows down. I said, how, how did this turn into this, an insult? This on Aaron? Quick. <laughs> yeah. So there, there are different times when I've played with him, and in tournament rounds, I shoot better, and off not always, but on occasion. What is and, happening? Right is now? that happening? Yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll have a conversation. Yeah, we're goes, gonna yeah. have a conversation here no, in a minute. Just, just hear me out, and he'll say, "Yeah, I, I get in the habit. I, we, we had a couple conversations. Get in okay, the habit of that's just true. Got to go fast, and then in a tournament round, you can't because there's always a group behind you." Or group in front of me and behind you. That's fair. And this, stop. this just turned into Aaron's a sucky no, tournament no, no. player. Absolutely not. It's quick. This is I don't like that it started with that you played better than me at tournaments. So <laughs> hey, listen, Ledgestone. So what was it? What was the tournament um, where you got so mad that you started throwing without looking? Oh, I don't know, Hudson, Mills. Hudson Mills. Hudson Mills. That, <laughs> you love Hudson the Mills. The SMO <laughs> that 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 tournament scarred me. I've skipped it for the last two years, <laughs> even though it's a great tournament. <laughs> I, I zipped my cart up with a zone in the putter pocket and finished the last 10 holes only with a zone. That's hilarious. Then there was a time at Hunt's Hideaway, you were so frustrated. You just, I'm just going to roller everything. Roller everything. Forehand roller. That's pretty funny. Yeah. Sorry. You play long enough, those those days happen. It's, it's, it's life. So that came out of my pet peeve. <laughs> my my like bet. This is I a like little, little I'm healing the same process way. I'm for an me. efficient player. I don't like to wait around and I mm-hmm. have to. You got to catch up to him. I have to personally slow myself down when I see a slow, slower card mates. You know, Nate, I, I will compliment mm-hmm. you. Your putting has slowed down and gotten better. Like yeah, well, you, I, you have done that on purpose, haven't you? I've intentionally created a putting routine, mm. and so it's been good for you. Can yep. you show us how, how it is right now? 
<laughs> on the podcast? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess I can. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. He was going to do it. I love it. It's yeah. kind of awkward, Stand too, because he sticks his butt out a little bit when he does it, so it's like, I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't want to say it. I mean, we'll give the people what they want, right? <laughs> right. That's just a separate just, video. Just yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so we, we developed some fun. Um, it kind of, the, the reason for it was because of the growing pains and sure. us, you know, naturally not being in tune uh, or just simply just not able to be in tune with everyone's skill level as mm-hmm. much nowadays, just because we have a wide range of players. Um, and ultimately we want as much input as possible. Mm-hmm. And so we created this fun committee. Um, this committee is going to meet um, in an ideal scenario, and this is, you know, we're going to try and get them to meet. Well, we're, they're going to meet in the beginning of every season, and then somewhere along the line in the yeah, middle of the season. Through, yeah. And this committee, we hand-selected because we deemed them to be most in tune with the most amount of players. The big picture. The big picture. And so um, they're... They are going to dictate and ultimately help us pool everyone into where they, their core, I'm slowing down, their current form right, is go. going to align. And so, uh, my apologies on that. So, <laughs> their current uh, corn, okay. <laughs> so, no, Nate, I'm actually really excited about this because yeah. uh, you guys kind of joke, but there's always a little truth to it, right? Of like, Aaron has to decide where to put right. you. You show up at league, and I'm pretty qualified to do that, but I sure. don't like that it's on my shoulders. You've sure. done a really good job at it, honestly. So. What I have to do is I have to say, okay, who invited this? Who invited you? Can you vouch right. for them or the ABC? Sure. What course do you play the most? Okay, you play firefighters a lot. What do you shoot there? Okay, you shoot six over. Uh, that's probably like a low B. Sure. You're, we're going to drop you in the B pool. And more I'm often for, than I'm not, it works, best. but like we've – you guys have been cool about giving me some feedback of like, hey, we've got this person here. I don't know if they belong there. Right. You know, a couple of weeks in, it gives us that. I right. think I think this is going to be an improved version of that. So hopefully this streamlines everything mm-hmm. and gives us a better idea on where everyone's current form is at. Yeah. And so the guys that are on the committee are... Wait, wait, wait. Are we going to... Is, is this just now getting announced? Well, the Do guys know, know what they yet? are. Okay. The guys know who they are. They're meeting on Sunday. They're meeting on Sunday. I just didn't want people to like pass out in front of their computer right now. Like, like, what have I picked for? (laughs) So so these guys know what they got selected. Um, Also, we're going to do a fun segment um, Sunday night. So we're actually going to go live and we're going to watch them hash it out. We're going to do a fun format for them to hash it out. Be looking for that. So we got Zach Pesta, Dylan Dayeski. Stephen Demick, Will Kachis, Michael Thomas, Nick Alice Shimitaro, Tony Lewis, and then Wade Bonanucci. So I, I do throw the caveat on Wade because okay, so maybe I've, Wade's I've the one guy contacted, attempted to contact Wade, Wade a few times to no avail. Okay, so but we are hoping he'll accept. Yeah, so maybe Wade's did you contact him on Discord? No, try that. He always replies. Like, yeah, we Hawks called all, all the guys to, you know, convey. What they got we their wanted. letters in the mail, like <laughs> a little gold <laughs> seal on it. Got the, got the stamp. So we think these guys are not it's only going to be able to do Harry that. Potter with it. I don't know. <laughs> so we think dun, these guys dun, are not only going to be able to give us a big picture and give us an idea on where everyone's skill level is, but we think their personalities match really good together and can kind of build on one another. I'm excited to sense. listen to the uh, conversation because there's going to be some disagreements. I'm excited too. I think I'm it's going to see pool. <laughs> yeah, there might be some sabotage. Personal vendettas. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Cool. Um, next season, uh, we're going to revert back and do our fun segment Who You Buying? Mm-hmm. Who You Selling? Um, who wants to go first? I'll let you guys. Um. So, Nate, earlier you referred to this ABCD thing. Um, do you want us to buy or sell people based on where we think they might fall on that ABCD thing? So I want you points, guys, right? No, so I'm I'm referring to um, skill level. Skill level. So this is going to be really confusing. Skill level with a little dash, a little pinch mm. of pooling. Mm. Okay. Mm. So if you think they're going to jump a pool, drop a pool, but more so skill level. 
because I want us to focus on skill level a little more because it, it does get confusing. There. Can, I, can I call out what happened at the beginning with what our initial predictions were? Yeah, let's do it. So I don't. I never. All of you guys said you didn't think Tony was going to do very good, right? I don't know how he finished. Well, I I said that and you said that, right? I said uh, I said Tony. Yep. No, I said David. Nope. I said David Watkins. We said Tony. You guys said Tony. Okay, yeah, we said Tony. Because I said David won't show up. And he right. showed up like three times. Not feel, enough Not enough to even qualify for the ace race. I feel like I won that. He showed up at least five times, I think. Did He He, he yeah. might have just hit five, yeah. yeah. All right, fine. I, I five. Remember, well, he wasn't at the how ace many race. Did, how, did Tony make five? He probably just made know. five. I'd have to go back and look. Okay. I feel like we were all relatively correct. Yeah, I th- is that fair? I feel like Tony underperformed for his perception, but I feel like he, he performed well enough to stay in, in yeah. our Tony's going to be so mad at this podcast. Probably. He, but came, see, in, he came and fought his case. Interruption part two. I so, mean, if right. you look at the, if we look at the scoreboards, right, right, he popped off maybe once or twice, but really did, weeks. didn't shine to right. Right. He had a tough his potential. Palmer. Yep. And then, but, but then, so same with David. He was there a couple weeks, and he just finished like ninth or tenth. And when you see David, you don't think David's going to finish middle of the pack or lower. Right. You think so he's going to kill it. All right, so this is a total side question on that, but David, new house in Clinton Township. Ooh. So do you think, I think it'll be David, closer. house owner, busy, Ooh. fixing his whatever, doing his backyard, or is nope. it David is closer because he lives so David, far away? David's here more. I think David's going to be here more. Good. I think he's going to be here more. I like David pushes me. David yeah. pushes me to be better. I want him to be there. Yeah. I'd never say it to his face, but I like David. Ooh. Whoa! Careful. Now I'm gonna put that out now there right now. Out there on the internet. Clip also, that. Clip that. <laughs> so <laughs> heads up. Edit that, Benny. I'm gonna throw this at you and say I'm selling David again. He's trying out a brand new bag. It's true. All these guys uh, in these low started. I'm buying. Him. I'm taking the opposite bet. All right. Okay. All right. So, and I know we we it's right before bucks. we went it's live today. I don't know if you saw, but he's loving his brand new. We bag. talked about we talked Four about days. player ratings and about how if you don't play a lot of tournaments, that player ratings are not always accurate, right? So, what do you guys think about this? Did you notice what happened with Ian and David's ratings? Uh, David dropped like eighteen, and Ian jumped like twenty. They're tied right now. Really? Do you think that Ian is going to pass up David? Holy or was that a fluke for David and he's going to jump back up? Because if we're talking buying and selling, I'm buying Ian. No, nah, I think that's a fluke. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Ian hasn't played near as many tournaments as David. That's true. So you mean his can jump a lot easier? And yeah. 100%. But, There's not but, as many rounds rated. But if David's got that many and David dropped 18. Yeah. Well, I think the Spindler round played a lot into that. Um, oh wait, that was David's hot round. That was his hot round. He almost shot a So how did he drop eighteen, including that round? Well, that was a couple of weeks. Right? Oh, Maybe. the yeah. one before is the one that he made the big jump. So that was not necessarily sustainable. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So it was just good questions. He, I mean, he shot. He, I mean, we're talking about David, right? So he's shooting mm. really good golf. It's just he, he just dropped back down to where he should be. Right? Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. So um, I'm I'm buying Ian. I'm buying Ian. I played a doubles tournament with him a couple of weeks ago. I watched the dude splash out three aces in one day. Just he, that little puddle top zone is his money disc. Like he's so accurate, and he can throw bombs. That's who I'm buying. So, so I, w- I just want to clarify. So, so you're he, buying uh, David? No, no, no. Buying, buying, Ian, buying Ian. Are you selling anyone? Uh, you guys go first. I don't know who I'm, I'm selling yet. I'm, I'm buying David. I don't know who I'm selling yet. I'm changing my mind. You can't do that. What happened? I, well, it's I, already, I picked David last time. I feel bad. It's already I'll, written in stone. Where? I didn't see it. Who am I selling? This is tough. This is that awkward silence on the podcast you never want. Well, it's but. weird. Selling is hard because we really like these guys. <laughs> and so to call so, out one of our friends, so, like, I mean, I, I don't I'll, even I'll want you anymore. All right, what you got? What you got, Nate? I'll take the lead. I'll first go over who I'm buying. I'm buying Dylan. I think Dylan's ceiling cool. is really high. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's taking his game seriously. And so mm-hmm. I, I suspect he's going to push for that upper echelon A okay. soon. Um, now, who am I selling, right? This is tough. I think... I think we've been really high on Steven Demick. I was I was thinking about it. I think he's regressed a little bit. Me too. Um, but I don't just know if just with the total package. And so I'm going to sell him temporarily and I might buy him 
down the road, but I think I'm going to buy him while he's low. Can we do that? And I think he's going to drop a little more. Okay. And so that's who I'm selling, buying Dylan, selling Steven. Go ahead, Hawks. Okay. I am going to buy John Jackson. And your boy really? John Jackson puts in a lot. Wait, dude gets to play every day at lunch. Yeah. He does. Dude puts in a lot, and he's he's working with Ian on Discord. Form, trying to get better. Distance is holding him back a little bit, but that'll come. Yeah, so I'm buying John sure. Jackson. I know who I'm selling. All right, who are you selling? Someone that I had a lot of hopes for. I didn't buy him, but I thought would way, way overperform than he did. Okay. Zeke Nitz. Ooh. He, I think Summer is going to get him, and he's going to have a lot of opportunities to do different things. I, I Not only do I think he's not going to perform as well, I don't think we're going to see him as much. No. I, I Unfortunately, I would probably agree with that. And I'm sure that his mind is going to start to turn towards college in the fall. Mm-hmm. Um, Didn't think about that. You know, not going to be living there anymore. I'm probably going to play more rounds with him in Ann Arbor than I will in, you know, Tri-County area around here. Sure. Hmm. A little tear fell down my cheek. Yeah, that hurts. I'm going to sell Sean. So he's peaked. Whoa. He's peaked. <laughs> wow. That's right. I don't mind that pick. I mean, I mean, that is right. You sell high, right? I'm just saying. Big money. Because people would pay for Sean right now. If we were fantasy drafting our, our league. I, I'm not. I, I don't think. He, I think he's going to continue to completely dominate. <laughs> I got to be honest. I'll, he's I'll make, so freaking consistent. I'll make a bold take that Sean, Sean will be 900 by September. He's shooting a lot of rounds over and, 900 already. I he know. just plays so much golf. And, and, and I know that might not sound like a bold take, but those of you who play a lot of tournaments, you know how hard how, it is. How many tournaments? The higher you get, harder. the harder it yeah. is to grow. How many tournaments does he have? Is he signed up for right now? Though? No, no, not no. a ton. I'm, I think I'm joining him at Hunt's Hideaway this weekend. Sure. Uh, he he hits one to two a month. He's pretty okay, regular. Then I can I can buy into that. I think he's going to be there. All right, so here here's one that I feel selling is hard. I'm going to sell... Come on, Mr. Hoxie. Dang, my leg. I, 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 I've been playing with him a lot in the last couple months. He is not the man he used to be. This is not just a Pearl Jam song either. This is, uh, you've been struggling, man. You've been last. like, you, and Hoxie's so laid back that there's sure. people out there that whine and complain and do the like, oh, thing when they play bad. Like, he doesn't do that. He's like, so people he's got don't some, realize he's doing bad because right, he's, he's, he's chill. Right, he's got good priorities in life, and so he doesn't get all worked up. But, uh, I mean, Hawks, we saw you at Ledgestone last year. That was probably the most influential tournament mo- moment any of the players in our league have ever sure. had, including myself who's played, sure. you know, in a major, whatever, U.S. amateur. Uh, that was so influential, and so, like, you were on. I think that was my turning point. I feel like almost since then it's that been. That was your Sean Clancy, your peak moment. Yeah, that's right. And and uh, you you just have not necessarily shown up, and you have those skills. You I know how good you are. Friends. So you know, I don't, I think, this hurts, man. This hurts you, me. You know, I think it, a lot it hurts of it me because it hurts you. Yeah. All right. I think a lot of it is I have not put as much Kitty, time. Geez. No, this is this is hundred percent. We bought a dog. Oh my gosh, and here we go. We buy a dog, and it's a big dog, and he takes big old dumps. And my backyard is covered in dog poop. You know where I try to putt? I try to putt my backyard. I don't go in my backyard to putt anymore because it's too much dog poop. So I have not putted hardly at all. That is the so, dumbest just, thing just I've wanna, ever I just heard. Just so if Nacho's watching the podcast right now. <laughs> He's like, yeah, that's true. I just want to point out that what you got? for everybody watching, Hawks just said the reason he's not doing as well and sucking is because he's got a dog that takes big no. poops and he doesn't practice putting anymore because of the yeah. poopy. Urine. I thought it was because yeah. you were too busy coaching. That let's, seemed to make a lot more let's sense. Let's clip that as Absolutely well. not. Hoxie it is was, worse because of dog poop. I have not put the time Hoxie in. Hoxie plays on, like dog poop <laughs> because of putting. dog poop. Don't do dog poop like that. Come, Come on, on, dude. Seriously. I got to put way more time on the putting green. That's it. That's and, fair. And, and I fully I agree. What's cool. it going to take, Ox? Is it literally just putting in the backyard? Yeah, because putting... Has that been the thing that you've been most dissatisfied lately with? Well, so I can make a decent shot and hit a 35-footer. 
right? I can make play a great shot and hit a 10 footer fine, but if I'm not hitting the great shot if I'm if I'm off the tee a little bit, off to the left, off to the right, of hitting a 35 footer at 50%, I'll take that all day, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Being that consistent, that will save 25, 28, 35 hitting those at a consistent clip will increase your score tremendously. And I was relying on hitting those. Those just inside the last circle year. Right. So Very consistent. So real quick, we're running out of time, but Sorry. I want to talk about the keys to success for next season. Sure. Uh, what are the things that guys should be focusing on if they want to have potential to take it down? What are those? Sean will tell you draw better. Draw better? Okay. Draw better partners. <laughs> better partners. Yeah. Honestly, short game. Yeah. It's short, short game all day. I don't care how you drive. Okay. Like, any, if you get 150 feet off the tee, that's that's great. Because the average holes, you're, you, you know, you're around 300 feet. So, like, you're, if your short game is better, you will be a better <coughs> golfer. Upshots, for sure. Upshots and putting. I agree with upshots, but I want to challenge it because our league, people are scoring. If you look at the scores... Mm-hmm. We're predicting seven, eight, nine, and we shoot Palmer fourteen under. We shoot Stony Greens ten under. Yeah, but what's the difference when someone's hitting their forty footers now? Well, I'm saying in general, on the upshots, it okay. Yeah, if if I'm hitting a seventy footer mm-hmm. compared to a thirty five footer for birdie, right? Our league at, in in general, mm-hmm. we're all getting better as a whole, and the league tends to be. Hitting those, not every time, That's but fair. more often not based on the score. So it's it's a valid point. Mm-hmm. I think the keys to score. success for these for this upcoming season are two things. I think circle two putts. I think okay. you have to sprinkle those in sure. in your in your round. Sure. I also think bonus points. I think bonus points are huge. I think yeah. they're immensely valuable going into the end of the season points. Um, I think and knowing when to score. I know this is crazy, but like. When there's a high attended night, or when you're talking about this three or four man scramble and how many points you're going to get off of that, yeah, that's like true. those are the nights you really got to be laser yeah, focused. Yeah. You're right. Like th- those high point nights. There was a night, uh, our really high attended night. I played t- played horrible, and I'm like, that was an you opportunity. Lost so much. Sean yeah. Sean won it was both twenty and a half. He won a forty four player week and a forty six yeah. player week. Our two Huge. high weeks, he yeah, won that both was, of them. That, that's that's what game put him changer. In, yeah. Yep. I feel like success next season depends on who you are. Um, Because I feel like if you're an A player, uh, you have to be consistently good because you know that the partner that you draw might contribute a shot or two to your sure. to your game. And sure. it, like if you're streaky and you're an A player, you're no good. It's tough to do. If you are a B player, you can be streaky because you are counting on yeah. a partner that will balance you. Yeah. Um, and so I feel like um, B's though. If you're going to be a B in this new ABCD, you there's some people that might need to put some distance on their game because mm-hmm. there are some solid B players who cannot throw 350, mm-hmm. and you're just not going to score. Yeah. If you only score the holes under 300, you do good, yeah. but you're not going to win. That's fair. And, and if you're a, if you're a D player, I will tell you like even lower season D's. The 20 and 25 footers mm-hmm. is the key to you winning the season. So it's weird because it kind of depends on who you are. Sure. What is what is going to make you and your partner rise to the top? 100%. That's fair. I love all those answers. That's good. Um, next league night, next Tuesday, um, we are going to be at Spooner Park. Mm-hmm. Talked a little bit about it, the beast layout. Um, potentially triples, even quadruples. Yep. Um, that's going to be a blast. I'm excited for that. Winning score predictions. Where do you guys think the score is going to be for the beast layout? Mind you, it's 18 holes. There's some fours and five. There's one five. One five. Then there's some fours sprinkled in there. Actually, last question before we do that real quick. I want your opinions. The five used to be hole three, you know, tall basket, hole three. Mm -hmm. Three, all the way to five's basket. Or the downhill basket. Yep. Yep. So that was the old beast layout. I'm toying with the hole five shot. It's really fun. Yep. That eliminates that shot. Should mm-hmm. we bring that shot back into the into the round? And go three to four. And play three to four. 
with some OB on the hill. I like it. I like it. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Yep. I, d- I didn't know that first because that's going to change things, right? Because mm-hmm. everybody was birdie in the par five. Yeah. I don't know if everybody will birdie that par four. I love the ending of that that hole too. If we, if we make, you know, the, obviously the fence and everything underneath OB. that mm-hmm. to, to the, the path. That's a, mm-hmm. that's a very difficult birdie for a par four. You got to make a decision there. Yep. I love the decision strategy. So you're looking making. at you're looking at par sixty two. So if you think a normal par three course is a par fifty four, this is eight extra strokes. Um, so four okay. four per loop, four par fours. So I, I just wanted that to be out there before yeah, so you guess understand. how many under. Because normally par fours and par fives score softer calling nine. than difficult par threes. Nine. Nine down. Mm-hmm. Do you remember there's that one little par two? We call it the shuffleboard, shuffleboard hole. It's like a par two 50-footer. That was that little, it was just a little... You had Are to make the putt. Do that for part of the score. Mm-hmm. Is that part it of the was. Score? It was part of the score. It was a par two, so, but with a foursome. I think everybody birdies it. Yeah. So I, I want to bring this Nine. on the podcast. I was going to bring it up to you, Aaron, but I think it'd be fun to talk about. Um, I think it's a crazy idea, so I can't imagine us actually implementing it. But the island hole. What if we made the island ob and everything inbounds? So we had to lay up close to it, and the island actually played as a hazard, and mm. so you could make the decision. To go for the two, we got to lay it up closer and then hit the putt. Park it and get a three. Get a three. Or lay up 40 feet away and try to make two. Which is kind of fun. In a group of four, yeah. your chances are up there. Yeah. It's just fun. I, I wanted to talk to you, uh, but I figured I it'd like, be fun to talk about I the podcast. I like that. We'll have like to think that. about that. So, yeah. Benny, you said nine? Mm-hmm. I think seven. I think somebody's going to shoot seven. I'll go eight. I'll split the difference. That's, that's a, fair. That's a wimpy What's yours? Box. So, seven, eight, nine. I think we got some far throwers on our on our league. With these longer holes, they can si- simply. I they think go birdie. crazy. Go twelve. Dude, that's wild. I don't. Did someone say nine? I did. You said nine. Did someone say eight? Seven, eight, seven, eight, nine. Right now. I'm feeling freaky. I'll go ten. Whoa, Whoa. feeling freaky. So yeah. I think you called it right, Nate, on the long holes because like two holes come into my mind right now. Um, do you know what hole eight is? It's off the top of the hill, on the side of the hill. Most people throw a big sweeping anizer. The basket's just sort of the tennis court. Mm-hmm. We tee off now from five's tee pad. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's even a little longer. Only the bombers are going to get that hole. Yeah. And you play it twice. And then also there's the one that is hole nine to 12's basket. It's 400 footer. Yeah, it's a bomb. Only bombers are going to get it. You're going to play it twice. So I think you're right. I think the players who show up and throw really far. Especially you can get a little riskier with how many players you have players. in your car. Yeah, yeah. Yep. For sure. Cool. So we'll, we'll, we'll close out the podcast. Any last, um, um, last statements you guys want to make? New life. New season. That's right. New season. That's right. Get refocused. That's all yep. I got. And I'll tell you Refresh. this too. One of my favorite things about this league had the same conversation tonight. Uh, two conversations. One was, I'm so glad that my buddy invited me to join you guys. Yeah. And then somebody said, Aaron, thanks for putting on this league and making it be beginner friendly. Yeah. So if you're watching this podcast, bring the you know who bring you got. Him. You know the guy that I'm talking about because you've been thinking about him. Invite him in. You know everybody will give him Frisbees. That's mm-hmm. right. And he's going to be welcome, whoever he is. Uh, bring him in. We want to, you know, yep. I don't want to say it's all about like membership numbers, but like, we think we got a good thing going, and yep. so bring them in. That's right. Yeah, I think so far it's really worked really well for us. So bring all the people that you know, new people, all like whatnot. So drive up and down the street, just yep. find people, Correct people. <laughs> um, cool. Um, so do all the YouTube things, like, subscribe, Comment, smash, smash the like button, smash that like button, do all of them. Um, thanks for watching. Um, one. Yeah, and uh, peace. See ya. <laughs> See ya.